and we'll take a look at uh, research uh, that has actually been uh, carried out on uh, different uh, learning styles and uh, the ability to learn information. And uh, I've often seen uh, teachers uh, create information or learning materials such as this. So uh, we have here a poem about mighty mammals, about the whales. Whales are enormous, their size is tremendous, their length is fantastic, their weight is stupendous. So the question is, is are these learning uh, tools actually effective? And specifically, do they match up with the way that learning is assessed? So again, we'll take a look at that psychology question and see how we need more complicated uh, versions of the experimental uh, design in order to answer those important questions. All right, let's take a look at some actual uh, psychology uh, data. So uh, once again, um, in educational psychology, there is a, um, there's a, a large myth that people are trying to fight in terms of preferred learning style. So a lot of students, a lot of educators, they kind of believe that preferred learning style, uh, students learn better in their preferred learning style in actuality, they don't. There's no evidence for that. Uh, most of us are visual learners, whether we prefer that style or not. But it doesn't stop people from trying different learning approaches. So they oftentimes, like I said, try different things, such as uh, using rhyming to help people learn information. So once again, these mighty mammals seem to think they can fly. They leap from the water into blue sky as if they are birds and their flippers are wings and they are bouncing on some hidden springs. So this has been used, for example, to teach uh, students about whales. The question is, is, is it effective? Does it actually work? And that's where a psychology experiment would come in. So this was a study done by Morris Bransford and Franks back in 1977. And they want to know if learning style, uh, does the best learning style depend upon the testing or the real life situation in which you're going to use the information. So in terms of learning style, does it, is it best to match the learning style with the testing situation, or does it not matter? There's some other effect that occurs. So what they did is they had two independent variables, independent variable A and independent variable B. And in independent variable A, that was the encoding condition. How did you learn the information? What style was the information presented to you? Independent variable B, that was a type of recognition test. How were you tested on the information? What was the style of the testing? So encoding condition, uh, independent variable A, the encoding condition had two levels. Independent variable B also had two levels, the recognition type. So we have a two by two factorial design. What they did is they presented pairs of words to individuals. And they actually, no, sorry, another experiment I was thinking of. They presented a word to individuals and you were in two different encoding conditions. Half of the subjects were asked to think of a word that rhymes with the word that they just saw. So you would see a list of words, just like you saw a list of words in our experiment. And for each word, they asked you to think of a word that rhymes with that word. So if you saw chair, you might say hair. If you saw frog, you might say log. If you saw uh, car, you might say, you know, superstar, whatever it is. You had to think of a word that rhymed with the word. That was how you encoded your information. That was half of the subjects. The other half of the subjects had to encode this semantically. And what they did was they asked them for each word, what we want you to do is decide, is it alive or is it not alive? Is it an animate or inanimate object? So if you saw a chair, you would read it and say, that's not alive. You saw a frog that's alive. You saw a car, not alive. So you had to make a decision that was a semantic decision that required you to access information about the meaning of the word. So to figure out if a word or to figure out a new word that rhymes with the word, you don't need to know what that actual word is. So if I say something like um, uh, bajananon, right? Do you guys know what a bajananon is? No, you don't. Do you know what a phenomenon is? Yeah. Do the two of them rhyme? You can say that even if you don't know what a bajananon is. And now I gotta come up with that because I just made it up. Anyways, <laughs> you might not know what bajananon is, but you can come up with a rhyme. 
If I asked you, Bajananan, living or non living, you have no idea. So it's accessing two different types of information. Semantic is typically thought of as a deeper uh, type of processing. What they did then is they had them learn in these two types of situations. They then had them do a recognition type test with two different types of recognition. So what they asked them is they presented them with words and they asked them, did you see a word previously here that rhymes with the word you're looking at right now? Okay, so if you previously saw a chair, they might put a word up that says underwear and say, have you seen this word before? That's oh, sorry, a word that rhymes with this word in your previous list. That was the rhyming recognition type. And then the other one was a standard recognition type. Have you seen this word, right? You, you uh, looked at chair, here's chair on the page. You simply say, yes or no, I've seen it before. You've seen frog, here's frog on a page. You simply say, yes or no, I've seen it before. So not words that rhymed with what you saw, but words that were actually the ones that you saw, your standard kind of recognition test type. All right, any questions on that, the general design? All right, let's get to what they found. So what we have here is uh, on the y-axis here, we got proportion correctly recognized. Basically, the higher the bar, the better your performance. Right, so this would be 90% correct, 20% correct down here. And again, you just have to circle the words that you've seen before and not circle the words that you had not seen before or circle the words that rhyme with words you've seen before or not. Encoding condition here, we got people that encoded the information as a rhyme, people that encoded the information semantically, alive or dead, people that encoded it as a rhyme, people that encoded it as semantic, and then over here, we have the performance of individuals on the standard recognition test. And here we have performance of the individuals on the rhyme recognition test. And that gives us our four different conditions. So we had people that learned it with the rhyme were tested with the rhyme. People that learned it with the rhyme were tested with the standard test, learned it semantically, tested it with a rhyme, learned it semantically, tested it with the standard test. We got four different conditions. How did they do? Well, for the standard recognition test, for people that learned it semantically, their performance was very, very high. Uh, for people in a standard recognition test that learned it via rhyme, their performance was much lower. So not surprisingly, the reason that most of you, when you're trying to learn, when you're trying to study material, you're not sitting there going complex experimental design rhymes with firm plex, developmental uh, recline. Oh yeah, that's gonna help me. You kinda know this already, right? Rhyming is not gonna be that good. But what about if you learned it as a rhyme? What if you encoded it as a rhyme and then you were tested in a rhyming situation? Well, in that case, semantic individuals, people that learned it semantically, but then were tested in a rhyming situation, they did rather poorly. And people that learned it in a rhyming condition and then were tested in a rhyming condition, actually did uh, better in that situation. So these are the overall results that they have. And now we're gonna take a look and we're gonna break those down and we're gonna see were there main effects, were there uh, interactions, uh, and what exactly is the story uh, coming out of this data here. All right, so first off, main effect of A. Is there a better way to encode? So is there, uh, is one way of encoding superior to the other way of encoding? Is there a difference in proportional correct between semantic encoding and rhyme encoding? Bless you. So what we want to know is that in general, regardless of how you're tested, is it better to encode in one way or is it better to encode in another way? So uh, who here wants to tackle that? Is there a main effect? in general across this experiment, ignoring the way that people were tested, is it better for subjects to have encoded in one way or is it better for them to have encoded in another way? Or is there almost no difference? All right, I'll get the ball rolling on this one. <laughs> okay, so. Not, not as simple and straightforward sometimes as, as uh, one might imagine. 
when you're asking that and you're looking at an interaction here, right? When you're asking it and you're looking at a graph like this, what you need to do is you need to kind of collapse across conditions. So what we can do is we can say, all right, let's take a look at everybody that encoded semantically. On average, how did the people that encoded semantically do? So we have people that encoded semantically and were tested in a standard test. We got people that were encoded semantically and were tested in a rhyming test. So on average, people that encoded semantically did about that good, right? They got about just under 60% correct in their recall. So this is the average I encoded it semantically um, performance. For the rhyme performance, this is how rhymers did when they encoded it in a rhyming way on a standard test. This is how rhymers did when they were tested in a rhyming condition. And you take the average of that and surprisingly, just a little bit lower. So on average, people that used a rhyming scheme performed just a little bit lower than people who encoded the information semantically. So this main effect would probably mislead you into thinking, you know what, you want to learn this information semantically? Learn it semantically. You want to learn it via a rhyme? Look, it's almost as good. You know, so if you prefer to learn via rhymes, learn via rhymes. It's almost as good as learning semantically. So if you want to go home and say, yeah, complex experimental design, uh, suplex developmental resign, great, that's fine. You're still going to be doing just about as good as semantics. That's what the main effect of encoding condition says. As you can imagine, that's not the real story. But there is a main effect of encoding condition slightly better for semantic, but not that much compared to the rhyming condition. What about the main effect? Whoops. Oh, yeah. So yes, there is what I basically just said. Yes, semantic encoding is better, but just barely. All right, what about a main effect of B? Is there a better way to actually test? Were people superior in their recognition test scores for one way of testing, the rhyming way of testing, versus the standard semantic way of testing? So this one is a little bit more visually apparent. So anybody want to let me know which way of testing produced higher recognition scores? Mm -hmm. The standard did, exactly. So it didn't matter if you encoded via rhyming or if you encoded via semantic. If you take a look at the average performance on the standard recognition test, that's the average performance right there. So we have, again, that's how the semantic encoders did on the standard recognition test. That's how the rhyming encoders did on the standard recognition test. That's how subjects on average did on the standard recognition test. You take a look at the rhyme recognition test. That's how uh, rhyming encoders did on the rhyme recognition test. That's how uh, semantic encoders did on the rhyme recognition test. That's how subjects on average did on the rhyme recognition test. And you can see that there is a big difference here. You do way better on standard recognition tests than you do on rhyme recognition tests. So what this effect is telling us is that uh, you will perform better on a standard recognition test than you will on a rhyme recognition test, regardless of how you've actually encoded it. In general, standard recognition is better than rhyme recognition. And that's why typically in a school here, uh, when you're doing multiple choice tests, they will say, which one of these options do you recognize which one of these options you know is the correct definition of an independent variable and not which one of these options rhymes with the correct definition of an independent variable because a rhyming test is just going to produce far far poor results and if you have a if you have a uh, professor that does you know rhyming tests if you have a professor that says something like why don't you write me a poem about you know independent variables Probably uh, you're going to have a harder time than you will for somebody who's like, won't you write me an essay about independent variables? All right, so that's the main effect of uh, the type of testing. Was there an interaction? Uh, was there an interaction between the two? That is, 
is the best learning style dependent upon how you're actually being tested? Is there a difference between the effects of a coding and coding conditions? Is it dependent upon the effects of uh, how you're being tested? And for this one, this is where you have to take a look at all four bars. You have to take a look at what is the story in each section of this experiment. So four standard recognition tests. Rhyming is poorer than semantic encoding. So if you're doing standard recognition tests, you are worse off if you learn using rhyming than you are if you learn using semantic encoding. But that doesn't mean that semantic is always better. Because if you are doing a rhyme recognition test, you are better off learning uh, under rhyming encoding than you are learning under semantic encoding. So what this means is if a friend of yours comes up to you and says, you know what, you're a psychologist, I'm struggling in my course, how should I study? Should I study trying to learn the material by rhyming it? Or should I study trying to learn the material by semantic understanding? According to this research, your answer will be, it depends. What kind of tests are your, is your professor giving you? And if they say, oh, our professor is this weird professor, they really like using rhyming tests. Well, then you would say, oh, that puts you in this story. In that case, yeah, definitely learn the material by rhyming. That's going to be better off for you in that, in that course. If on the other hand, they said, yeah, my professor's standard type of test, semantic understanding, then you would say, oh, well, now the story changes. Now you're in this section here where semantic encoding is what you actually need to do. So what's the best type of encoding? It interacts with how are you being tested. If you're being tested in a rhyming condition, learn it under rhyming encoding. If you're being tested in a semantic condition, best to learn it under semantic encoding. And that's one of the reasons why semantic encoding is typically preferred. Uh, semantic tests are typically used because in the real world, people usually want to know, do you understand this? So in the real world, somebody will come up to you if you're a psychologist and say, you know what? I have a client and they're battling depression. Do you understand things about depression? Do you have semantic knowledge about things about depression? And you would say, yes, I do. Depression works like this, it works like this, it works like this. Nobody in the real world is ever gonna say, you know, oh, I have a client, you know, they're suffering from depression. You're a psychologist. Can you bust me off some sweet rhymes about depression? And you'd be like, oh yeah, well, you know, uh, my name is depression and I'm here to say. It. Nobody's gonna ever say, ask you to do that. So in general, because we're in a world that tests us, that makes us access our knowledge in standard recognition forms, it's way better to learn information in a semantic way. So as fun as these songs and poems might be, they're actually not as effective as learning that information in a more straightforward semantic way, because learning it by rhyming is not gonna help you unless you're being tested also by rhyming. All right, any questions on that?